Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to all students. Okay, today uh, we are going to look at module 2, module 2, basic switch and end device configuration. So in this module, we will introduce to you about configuration of some Cisco device with the use of packet tracer uh, application. So let's start with the Cisco IOS access. So what is Cisco IOS access? So basically, uh, it's an operating system consists of shell, kernels, and hardware. So what exactly is shell? So shell is the user interface that allows user to request specific tasks from the computer. These requests can be made either through the command line interface or graphical user interface, CLI or GUI interfaces. So, and then we have a kernel and the kernel is communicates, is used to communicate between the hardware and software of a computer and manages how hardware resources are used to meet software requirements. And finally, we have the hardware, which is the physical part of a computer underlying, including underlying electronics. So if we talk about GUI here, Okay, GUI allows the user to interact with the system using an environment of graphical icons, menus, and windows. The GUI is more user-friendly and requires less knowledge on, of the underlying command structure that controls the system. So this is an example of GUI made from Windows. Okay, so GUI can fail, crash, or simply not operate as specified. For this reason, network devices are typically accessed through only a command line interface. So purpose for an, of an OS, basically an OS, okay, helps you to operate a system easily. So PC operating system enable a user to do the following, which is use a mouse to make selection and run programs and enter text and text-based command. But CLI-based network operating system enables a network technician to do the following. They can use the keyboards okay, to run the CLI-based network programs. And they use the keyboard to enter text and text-based commands and view, view the output on a monitor. So when you want to access a Cisco device, okay, there are three methods involved. The first one is using console. So the console is basically a physical management port used to access a device in order to provide maintenance such as performing the initial configurations. So this is an example of a console cable that you can attach between your configuring PC to a Cisco device. And then we have a secure shell. So secure shell establishes a remote secure remote command line interface connection to a device through a virtual interface over a network. So this is the recommended method for remotely reconnecting to a device. Here we use, usually use a third party configuration like for example, party, so that you can access, get access to any uh, IP address, computer that has the IP address, okay, using the secure shell. And then you have a telnet which is establishes an insecure remote CLI connection to a device over the network. So the user authentication, password and commands are sent over the network in a plain text. Then we have a terminal emulation programs. So here an application called party and terraterm. Okay, they are called terminal emulation program. They are used to connect to a network device by either a console port or by SSH and Telnet connection. There are several terminal emulation programs to choose from such as PuTTY, Teratum and Secure CRT. So I myself use PuTTY for most of my projects. Okay, They are not only used for Cisco CLI communication, uh, zero device communication. Sometimes if you are familiar with Raspberry Pi okay, or any other a small computers that use for Internet of Things project right now, usually we connect them with our own configuring computer with PuTTY. So next I would like to introduce to you about the Cisco IOS navigation. So firstly, let's introduce about the primary command modes, which is the user exec mode 
and also privilege execution mode. So user allows access to only a limited number of basic monitoring commands. Okay, identified by the CLI prompt that ends with the arrow symbol. Privilege execution mode allow access to all commands and features which are identified by this command line interface with the symbol hash. So you usually can see this symbol when you access a device, whether it's switch or a router. So once you enter a device, you can get access to the device, you can start configuring the device. Okay, so usually we have a global configuration mode and then we have a line configuration mode and we have an interface configuration mode, three modes. Okay, once you enter the privilege execution mode, you can configure using global, which is used to access configuration option of the device, including names or something, password, everything. Okay, and then you have a line configuration mode, which used to configure console, SSH, Telnet, or AUX access. Okay, and then you have interface configuration mode, which is used to configure a switch port or router interface. So, how do you navigate between these modes and these configuration modes? So, basically, in order to do that, for entering from user execution mode to privilege execution mode, you just put in an enable command. And from for global configuration mode, you just put in configure terminals and it will change into a configuration mode and you can press uh, enter exit for you to go back to your privilege execution mode. And then we have a line configuration mode, which is you put in line, console or number for something that you want to, to change. Okay. And then inside there, once you inside the line, you can do anything that you want to configure the line. Okay. And then finally, you can exit the line back to the privilege execution mode once you are completed. So other than that, we have what we call a sub configuration mode. Okay. So you know, uh, the line is also known as the sub configuration mode. Okay, to navigate between the privilege and the sub configuration mode, and you, uh, when you are hesitating of using the exit command, you can do it faster way by just pressing Ctrl Z button. Okay, so inside, like for example, configuration mode, you have line and interface, which is if. Okay, in order to switch between this, okay, you can just uh, put in the desired command. For like, for example, you want to put, you want to configure uh, interface from LAN, uh, line. So you just put the interface plus at the net zero slash one, which is the one of the interface that you want to configure. Okay, you just put this one and it automatically diverts you into configuration for interface for this fast edit net itself. Okay, so before we proceed to the basic configuration, okay, so let me demonstrate to you how it is done. Okay, this is an example of a packet tracer application. So here I am in a PC1 and I have a switch attached to me. So in order to, to communicate with the switch, okay, I have configured a line, line connection here between the, the PC1 and the switch. So inside PC1, I can access the terminal of the switch through the communication platform, through the uh, console platform. So here, okay, I'm already inside the switch. Okay, so inside the switch, as you notice, so this one is basically I'm in a user, pre uh, user execution uh, mode. So when I want to access the privilege execution mode i can just put enable and i'm already inside the privilege execution mode 
So if in previous execution mode, I can get access to the configuration. So I just put in configure terminal. And I'm already inside the configuration terminal. So once I'm inside the configuration terminal, okay, so I can go up until if I want to configure line console zero, which is the one that I'm connecting between the PC and the switch. Okay, I can configure something inside the line. Okay, so if you want to know what thing you can configure, you can press a question marks. Okay, so these are all the things that you can configure inside your line uh, line uh, terminal right now. Okay, so once you finish, you can either press exit or control Z. So when I put in exit, so I'll go back to configure the terminal. And if I put control Z, so I'll go back to the configuration uh, basic, uh, my uh, privilege execution mode. So we have other, like for example, configure terminal. If you put configure, configure terminal, okay, in case, I'm oh, sorry, so do we have a, a mistake here? So spelling is very particular when you want to uh, correct, uh, when you want to type in something. So make sure you check your spelling. So in this case, they have some markers to help you but uh, in this case you see that my mistake is in the configure uh, spelling so just be uh, they give suggestion but you need to particularly check all of your command when you make some mistakes okay so like for example here you put an interface fast at the net zero slash one so even though i don't have any host connected to the fast at the net zero one let me try so you are enter, entering the interface configuration mode and inside here you put question mark you can see what can uh, things that you can do inside this terminal so once you finish you can finish it by ctrl z okay so and then you go back to the towards the privilege execution mode so let's get back to the slides So let's take a look at the command structure. So basically the command structure of the terminal, okay, they have a keyword and also they have an argument. Okay, so what is the keyword? What is the argument? So for example, the keyword is that we have here is ping. Okay, ping and the argument is the IP address. Okay, or here show and then the argument is the IP protocols. So this is what we call a keyword and this one we will call uh, an argument. So all commands must be accompanied and must be a set of keyword and also an argument. Sometimes only a keyword, but it cannot be only argument. Okay. So inside the syntax check, okay, a command might require one or more argument to determine the keywords and argument required for a command refer to the command syntax. So both phase text indicates command and keywords that are shown uh, entered as shown. Italic text indicates an argument for which the user provides the value. So you have both, you have italic, and then sometimes you have brackets. Okay, so each of them determine whether it's a, a, elements of a keyword or elements of an argument. Okay, so if you are going to check, okay, the syntax. Okay, the command syntax provides the pattern of format that must be used when entering a command. For example, in the ping, ping keyword, ping is a keyword and you have an argument IP address which is usually designated as an interleak. So, means that the IP address should be entered as a form of recognizable IP address. Okay, so this one is not valid uh, instruction. You need to put in a valid IP address in this place. This just define, define the variables of the IP address. And then the second one is like, for example, we have a trace route. So also same thing, trace route is a command and IP address is something that you should insert. 
okay, for the command to work perfectly. So when it has a lot of argument, it can be as as long as this one. So here it can be a lot of keywords and some of them are even arguments. So we need to be careful and if you are very expert with this uh, configuration, you know that all of the commands will help you in configuring the device. So as I showed you before, okay, like if you don't, if you do not understand, if you don't know what you are going to do or if you don't know uh, how to use a certain keyword, you can just put the keyword name and also a question mark. Even if you don't know anything, what keyword should you do, what keyword should you use, you can just put in a question mark and it will navigate you to the navigation uh, navigation information that provides you the information and uh, description of the keywords of uh, what are they are used for and how to use them okay and sometimes if you enter a wrong uh, wrong spelling like, like what I did just before okay they will provide you some instruction and some marker telling you which part of the instruction that you have given command that you have given uh, is wrong okay in this case you have a small f for fast at the net it should be in a large f and sometimes okay if you forgot the spelling okay you know something like configure configure okay or something uh, you want to want to okay uh, uh, you can you you forgot the spelling and then you can just put what you remember and then you just put a question mark they will try to suggest you what command should you put in okay so in case uh, you have you want to simplify all the the all the commands that you are given to the uh, device okay like for example configure terminal you cannot put con because con they are used for configure and also connect so you have to use conf c o n f so because c o n f is only for configure okay so if you put c o n f and t automatically it recognizes as configure terminal and it open you the config so if you are you think that typing a lot of uh, the whole sentences is quite uh, time consuming for you, you can just use this kind of short form command to help you access even faster. So there are a lot of uh, hotkeys and shortcuts involved. Okay, for example, tab, backspace, left arrow, right arrow, control B or control F, up arrow which is control P. So this helps you, for example, tab completes a partial command name entry. Okay, backspace erase the character to left or right, left move the cursor to left, right arrow, move cursor to the right, up arrow, go back to the history of what you are going to do. Okay, so example, let me show you back in an example. So inside here, like for example, you have a command, you want to put command. Okay, so you put in like here, configure terminal. Okay, you can go to a left to delete some of the spelling that you have made wrong or go to the right. And then you can go to up. And then you can go towards history of what you have commanded before. Then you can go down to go to the latest one. Okay. So if you make a mistake, you can just backspace. Okay. And if you do, you uh, you can press tab to complete the spelling that you are uh, right that uh, you are typing. If in case you are forgetting the spelling or something. Okay, so other than that, we have the shortcuts like for example, enter key, which is display the next line, space bar, displays the next screen, or any other key, okay, which ends the display string, returning to the privileged execution mode. And then you have a control C, which end the configuration mode and return to privileged execution mode, okay, or control Z to go back uh, in execution, uh, in a configuration mode, re ends the configuration mode and returns back to the execution mode as well. And also you have a uh, control shift six, which break all sequence at the board and use to abort DNS lookup, trace routes, pings, and SC3. So in case you are doing something and then suddenly it becomes uh, quite like time consuming and then it's kind of doing something like a time consuming things. Okay, you just press control shift six and it will break everything and return back uh, yourself back towards the execution mode.
so let's take a look at the basic device configuration so here in this case okay you have uh, configuring the device name so here you just put in the switch configure terminal host name and what name you want it will change the name of the switch according to your desired name so let's for example okay let's like say here we put it inside configure terminal okay you are in config mode and then you just put host name and you change it into switch one for example and automatically switch in in the left point it will turn into s1 according to what you want so it must start with letter it cannot contain spaces for example if you need to put spaces just put dash enter with a letter or digits use only letter digits and dashes only and any other symbol is not allowed and must be less than 64 characters in length okay other than that you can insert password okay so for password we need to remember that you can put password for your device so you have a uh, password guidelines for your device which is you need to put in uh, more than eight characters combine of upper and lower case and then avoid using the same password for all device they are not used they, they, they do not use code and please do not use common words because they are easily guessed so we have <coughs> uh, in case you are implementing password for your device okay so you can put in your device a password as for securing the user execution mode or securing the privilege execution mode so securing the user execution mode you just put in configure terminal and put in the line console that you want to configure like for example okay in case of you want to access like uh, currently i'm doing line console zero okay you put in password cisco so here it put cisco as the password for the execution mode user execution mode and here you log in and 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 then you are already uh, inside the privilege execution mode so next time you want to access the user execution mode you have to put in the password cisco okay and then for next one securing the privilege execution mode okay you have to put in configure terminal first config and then inside there you put in enable secret class so here enable secret okay they activate a uh, password of class okay the class password for your privilege execution mode and once you finish you exit you're already inside the configure terminal so one, uh, once you want to re-access the configure terminal you have to put in the password class okay so other than that like for example you have line for vty okay 0 until 5, uh, 0 15 okay you want to put password for vty Okay, VTY lines enable remote access using telnet or SSH device. So many switches support up to 16 VTY lines that are number 0 to 15. So VTY, in case you want to put password in the VTY 0 until 15, the 16 lines that you have in telnet SSH. Okay, you put in line VTY 0 to 15, you put in password Cisco, login and and next time somebody wants to get access to the switch from the line VTY from the channel 0 until 15, okay so you, you they have to put in the password cisco in order to get access and then the password that you have okay sometimes it can be read okay by somebody okay so we need to encrypt the password okay so inside the configure terminal you can put service password encryption so inside the service password can encryption okay so once you run like for example show running configuration okay so if you put in show running configuration you will see that this is the uh, uh, an encrypted password okay it's not the password like for example cisco or class so this one is an encrypted password so nobody can get access to see your password okay once like for example somebody get access to your pc while you're not around Okay, when it's running, okay, you cannot see the password easily, okay, uh, because this one is an encrypted password. And then later on, okay, in case you want to put banner, like for example, authorized access only, user access verification, like for example. 
so authorized access only or somebody this is uh, owned by somebody somebody and only you can access okay you want to put some banner this is what we call banner so when you want to put a banner you just put in configure inside the configure terminal and put in banner MOTD with a hash as a start of the message banner message and hash at the end of the banner message so once you finish okay next time you want to log in you already activated for you so you have done a lot of configurations involved okay so it's time to save these configurations so configuration files okay there are two types there are startup configuration running configuration and running configuration so once you you start the device with startup configuration okay and when you change something it become a running configuration so once you finish doing configuration in running configuration you need to save your running configuration as a startup configuration or next time you want to log back in inside your device it will be the previous version startup version so you need to save it to be a new startup version so the next time you want to re to reaccess your device it will be the same configuration that you have changed previously okay so in order to do that okay here you can see show startup configuration okay so show startup configuration and then uh, here you can see show running configuration okay so this is uh, for you to see the difference between the two configuration that you have so once you want to save the running configuration and startup configuration you can just put in command uh, command copy running config startup config okay so like for example if i show you here okay so in case i show you here we have copy running config sorry miss uh, uh, dash here config startup config Oh. so what did I do wrong uh, supposedly I'm in a privileged execution mode or oh, I need to be up one point and I put the same command okay file name startup config yes okay so now everything that i have i have changed like for example the switch name okay next time will remain as one if not okay next time i want to access the switch it will become switch again okay so this is why we do the saving the configuration so after the running configurations okay you want to erase uh, okay uh, you want to alter the running configuration okay so you just uh, okay reload reload the, uh, using the reload command okay inside the privilege execution mode in this case okay you can just reload the startup configuration that you have before and it will come a new running configuration and you can change it back the way that you want okay so for example you are doing a lot of configuration and then you're saying that oh you did a lot of mistake you can using reload and it will okay change the state startup uh, you will change the running configuration to the startup configuration so if the undesired changes were saved to the startup configuration you can erase the startup configuration that you change by erase startup config command in the privilege execution mode after erasing the startup config reload the device to clear the running configuration file from ram so and then when you want to capture configuration to a text file okay in this case you have to use an a terminal emulation software like for example party or terrater okay you need to enable the logging into the terminal software assign a name and file location to save the log file 
the figure displays that all session output will be captured to the file here okay specify as my switch logs so you have to use uh, the log file names okay using your party configuration okay you cannot save it inside your switch or any and your router device or any other device okay so here then you put inside your your uh, switch that you want to record the configuration show running configuration and it will build the configuration and then you you the text displayed in the terminal window will be placed into the chosen file that you have which is the my switch log okay okay next we look at port and addresses so inside the pc okay you usually have a uh, ip address subnet mask and a default gateway so this three combination that we have is what gives you your pc and access to the internet okay so the ip address is the primary means of enabling device to locate one another okay so the structured ip address is a dotted four dotted decimal which is between zero until two five five okay and all ip address they are accompanied ipv4 ip address they are accompanied with a subnet mask which is 32 bit okay so this subnet mask determine to which subnet the device is a member and the default gateway address is the ip address of the router that the host will use to access remote networks including the internet so if you are going to access the internet usually your router that get access to the internet will be your default gateway In case of IPv6, okay, in IPv6, they have the IPv6 address, subnet prefix length, and also the default gateway as well. So, comparing to the uh, IPv4, okay, IPv4 previously they use decimals, which is basically the 32 bit binary, they convert it into uh, decimals, four sets of decimals. However, for IPv6, they use hexadecimal. So you got this A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, uh, D, uh, E, F. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F as well. Okay, with the decimal digit as well. So this one determines the group of 32 hexadecimal values. Okay, so they are used for IPv6 currently. So interfaces and ports, if you see that interface a lot of inside your switch, there are a lot of holes. So this is what we call the interface. Okay. So there are might be cables connected to copper, fiber optics, or wireless communication. Okay. So this network communication depend on end user device interface, network device interface, and the cables that connect to them. So types of network media include twisted pair copper cables, fiber optic cables, and also kosher cables, and also the wireless. Different type of network media have different features and benefits. Some of the difference between various types of media include distance the media can successfully carry a signal, environment in which the media is to be installed, amount of data, and the speed at which it must be transmitted, cost of the media, and installation. So all of these, okay, I already provided a video in module 4. Okay, you can refer about the media related to the physical media inside the module 4. So, in order to configure an IP address. Okay, so this is an example, okay, in order to configure an IP address. Okay, I'll show you inside the packet tracer. Okay, inside the PC. Okay, inside the desktop. Okay, if I finish with the terminal, so you can see that there is an IP configuration. Inside the IP configuration, you can see that I have IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server. Okay, so this is my IPv4 configuration. So you can change your IP address according to any other properties that you have inside the networks. Like for example, your networks requires IP address of a computer from between certain value to certain value, you can change your IP address to fit those value over here inside your computer.
So they are what we had called an uh, automatic configuration of IPv4 address. This is usually uh, used for your smartphone, for your wireless communication. They provide you a random IP address uh, specified by the router itself, Wi-Fi router itself. So DACP enables automatic IPv4 address configuration for every end device that it is, that is DHCP enabled. So here you can change it into your Windows PC by control panel network sharing center and change adapter settings. Okay. So in case of the Cisco device, you can uh, this one. I'm sorry. This one is in the Windows. You can use obtain an IP address automatically means that they are using the HCP protocol to give your device an automatic IP address defined by the Wi-Fi router itself, defined on the router itself. Okay, so in the switch, for example, to access the switch remotely, okay, an IP address and a subnet must, must be configured on the switch virtual interface. Okay, which is SVI. So you have to give the switch an IP address is in order to access the switch remotely. Okay, so you can put inside the configure terminal. You put in interface VLAN one. So it is here. You have a virtual LAN for your switch, and you can give your switch an IP address here. IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot twenty with its subnet mask. Okay. And you can enable it up to operate properly without shutdown by the no shutdown command. Okay, so I think that's all for today for your module two. Okay, uh, so this is a basic router configuration you can do by your own inside the packet tracer. Okay, you can download the resources. You can download the packet tracer file use in your net account account. Okay, your net account uh, under student resources. Okay, so you can configure them by yourself. Okay, like for example, uh, our lab module are mainly made for packet tracer. So you can test all your, uh, you, you can conduct all your lab tests. Okay, lab, lab, uh, lab exercises inside your packet tracer. And there will be an online test using your packet tracer later on for your skill base 1 and skill base 2 so you need to get familiar with the packet tracer as soon as possible okay so i've uploaded all the devices on all, uh, all the lab exercises online so please refer to all those information online okay so that's all for today i see i will see you later so stay safe stay at home and stay study Insha'Allah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.